Welcome to our Getting Starting tutorial of Quick Surface. Quick Surface is a standalone Windows application that allows you to import scan data from any scanner that can create STL meshes and then using tools and approaches to recreate a CAD model from the scan data and export the result for further use in other CAM packages or another CAD application. In this video tutorial I'm going through the basics and we'll let you know how you can start using Quick Surface. So let's begin. I will just go and select the main button and create an empty new document. You can see this screen which you already have with you. You can open any STL file from the button open a file or as I recommend the best way is if you start with our example files. When you install the software, the software comes with the many example STL files that you can practice and can, you can learn from the tutorials and apply your skills on these parts and when you are ready you can move on to your specific project. To access these example files you need to go to help, select examples and then pick one of the files. In this video we are going through a simple Lego block which looks like this. The, the imported STL mesh is placed into the main graphical area. On the top toolbar you can see the functions that you can use to create the cut model and they are organized into workspaces. When I say workspaces this means that for example you can go to the scan data and you can get all the tools to improve your STL meshes or you can go to create the freeform surfaces, surfacing and so on. Most of the common commands are organized into the main toolbar in a workflow. For example, you can start editing your scan and extracting primitives and so on and so on. But before we continue, let's learn how to navigate this object on the screen. In order to rotate the object, you can just hold your middle mouse button and while holding it down, you can just move the mouse on the screen. This will rotate the object. If you zoom in and if you hover over the STL mesh, it automatically will pick what we call the pivot point and this is how it will rotate. For example, now it will rotate around this point. If I move my mouse here, it will rotate around this point. This might be very useful. In some cases, if you just click outside, where there are no data, it will just take the center of gravity of the visible points and this will be your pivot point for rotation. Let's see how we can zoom in and out. And this happens just by using the mouse wheel. Just use your mouse wheel to zoom out and zoom in the object. The interesting functionality is that this is also a smart zooming in and out. What I mean is that if my mouse is somewhere here, this area will actually remain visible. But if I hover this area, this one will be focused in your view. This also is quite useful. Finally, how you can translate the object, it's just by using the control key on your key keyboard, just press and hold it down. And use the middle mouse button. This allows you to move the object. In some cases, if you just get lost and it's, the shape is something like this, you can always zoom everything just by right click, click the right mouse button, you get the menu and then select zoom to fit. Or, of course, if you just press the A key on the keyboard. On the top right corner you can see something which we call the navigation cube. If you just move your mouse over it will just show you the view menu that you can pick the standard views like here or you can place it in isometric mode. The other option is if you just highlight the side of the cube which indicates how you want to see it and click on it. You may see here that we have something which is called coordinate system. The coordinate system shows you the world coordinate system where it's, the object is placed 
you can see where is the origin, the axis, x, y, z axis that are indicator for you um, for your job during the reverse engineering. I'll just turn off the coordinate system for now because we don't need it and place it in isometric mode. We'll begin our first reverse engineering project. And before we begin, let me explain how we're going to build it. We'll just create the one main body here and then we'll create the four cylinders and we'll combine them. Let's see how we do this in our software. In the cut packages, you may know that the standard way of doing it is just creating revolved and extruded surfaces, different solids, and then you combine them with what is called Boolean operations. In order to create these shapes, in many cases we use something which is called sketching. Our 2D sketch is located into the main toolbar. I can just press it. Now what we see here is that we can have this uh, slicing plane and I can move it up and down just by hovering over the arrow, hold the left mouse button and move it up and down. And as you can see, it just creates a slice on our scan data. We'll use this reference points later to reconstruct accurately our sketch for uh, building an extruded solid body. In this case, as you follow my workflow, just go to the offset into control dialog and type 5. It will just place it 5 millimeters from where it started. I'm okay with this and we'll press create. Now make sure that the height scan data is uh, enabled. What it does that when I press create, it automatically will hide my mesh. Here is the point to say a few words what you see on the most left. This is the object tree where everything is organized, the different bodies. For example, here you will see later the planes, the cylinders and sketches and other surfaces or solids. Well, in the bottom window you will see the history. This is means that everything you do it will be recorded into a linear way so you can always go back and edit and everything will be reapplied. Let's create our first sketch. We will be using something which is called Extract Primitives. Extract Primitives is a functionality that allows you to brush over the scan data and it automatically will create what you have preselected. What we support in our software is the ability to fit a line, arc, circle also a freeform curve, but we also support some more complex shapes like rectangle, slot and hexagon. In this case, I'm going to create my first rectangle. I pre-selected the rectangle. If you see this um, circle on the screen in different shapes, you can just adjust your brush size with this slider. It's really, a, there is no specific value, it's your personal preference. So you can nicely brush with this. And I'm going to start the extraction. We'll hold my left mouse button down and we'll just brush over the sides of this rectangle. The software automatically will detect it as a rectangle and will create it for me with the parallel sides. As you can see here, it's automatically created it vertical and horizontal in the most accurate way. If you make a mistake, just press Ctrl Z to undo the operation and then start again. Try not to pick other shapes like what I'm doing here because this will create the wrong results. But just brush the points that are relevant to what we want to achieve. This is good for me. I can just press back and press OK. Now I created my first sketch. I will show the mesh so you understand where we are so far. The next step would be to create our main body and how we do this by creating an extruded solid. I will click with the left mouse on the sketch and I have a choice to pick the command from this pop-up menu here, which called extrude or from the main toolbar. This will create our first extruded shape. My software has been using the snapping before I start, but in your case you will receive something what you see on the screen now. Now you have these handles. This means you can pick them with the left mouse button and drag them up and down to, to 
the way you want it to be. You can type in some values here, which probably means nothing to you at this stage. What I want to introduce here is something which is called snapping. Let's enable the snapping and we type here something which is 0.05 mm. This means that it will show me how close we are using our um, color deviation map and you can see how close you are with the underlying mesh. I will just hold with the left mouse this arrow and start dragging. If you see it jumped because while I still hold the left mouse button it just picks a point from the underlying mesh and gives you a color representations of the quality how close you are and how your top plane of this extrusion is related to the scan data. You can see because this is a plastic box you can never get everything green because it's a little bit deformed. What you see is colors you can un understand from the color bar here is that everything that is green is within 50 microns and everything else is outside this tolerance. I will just rotate with the mouse uh, with the middle mouse button and we'll do the same on the bottom plane. Hold this and place it somewhere here. You see everything is green. This means it's very well manufactured. Now I'm happy with the result. I will press OK. So far we created our main body. Let's create the top cylinders. There are different approaches. You can extract cylinders, but in this case I'm going to use again a 2D sketch. I will pre-select the top plane and the software allows me to start a new cross-section from this plane. I can choose 2D sketch here or the main toolbar. And again, if you remember, I can just start dragging to pick the good cross-section. In this case, I will just place it at a 1mm offset so you can make the same like me and I will press create. Now what we see here are the cross sections of the four cylinders. You see that they are deformed. So it's really how do we want to design this. We will just create the perfect circles here. I'm going again, if you remember, to extract primitives. In this case, we'll pick the fifth circle. Holding the left mouse button will brush over just over the one circle so I can extract the best fit of it. As I'm happy now, I'll go back. What I'm going to do now is click on the circle to pre-select it. And we'll go and use something which is called Duplicate Selected Entities. Technically, Duplicate Entities is creating different patterns. The patterns can be linear or circular. And in this case, we need a linear pattern. You see that it's duplicated here at 10 mm offset. I can move my mouse hovering this arrow and I can just drag until it gets closer to what I need it, which is somewhere here. You can type in these values, you can change this to get it more accurate in this case. I see that the best way of having this is 7.9 mm. But I also need in the other direction, I will just select direction 2, by default it's X, uh, Y axis, and then again I can just drag it and place it where I want. We want to make everything perfect, so I will just delete this and make it 7.9. Now we are done with these four circles. We created our pattern and we created our sketch. If you remember, we can do this again by using the extrusion. Select the sketch and select extrude it. You can see that I, I had uh, my mesh hidden, so I show it back again. Now you can see here this is our history and these are our bodies. I can just hide the main body because I don't need it for now. Logically what our goal is just to take the top plane and place it on top of one of these um, cylinders. You can see that it gives a different results because this is not perfectly flat. During the manufacturing process something has been deformed. I will just place this in the left view and now what I need is just to drag this inside. The reason I'm dragging inside because this will help the software later to make what is called a combined operation. As I'm happy with this I can press OK. Now what we see here is the extruded surface one 
and the main body. We're still not ready. What we need to do is actually create one solid body out of all this. I can just hold my left mouse button and drag to select everything. Or the other option is I can just click on this feature. Then with the control, I can click on the other feature to make sure that the two are selected. What we need to do is what is known in the cut industry like combine operation, which is available in the main toolbar. I can just press combine. Combine works with the solids. We had the solids here and it merged everything together and created our solid body. We are almost done with our first project. What I need to do is just add some rounding on the top. I will show the mesh and we'll pre-select the combine solid and we'll go and pick something which is called fillet. In your case, this will be turned off, but you can always turn on and off the tolerance. The tolerance is a nice feature that will allow you visually to understand what is actually the fillet radius that you need. Now in this case, turn the tolerance on and with the mouse highlight the top four edges like this one and I pick the next one and this one and this one. If you make a mistake just press reset and pick again the four edges that you need. As we're done now you can hover over the arrow and start dragging. You can see that in real time the software shows you the deviation between the new fillet and the underlying mesh. This helps you understand what needs to be the fillet radius. And then it's in your hand to choose what you need to provide. In this case, I will just type in 0.3 and press apply. Or if you decide, you can play with 0.4. It's really in your hands to decide what values you can do. I can press OK and you can see that this is my first shape. In order to complete my project, I always press compare. If you have a different color view here, just make sure that you typed in 0.05 millimeter tolerance. The reason for this is that you can see how accurate your first project is in regards to the scan data. Again, to explain the green colors means that everything is within 50 microns tolerance and everything that is colored different is outside this tolerance. You can just move your mouse over the problematic areas and you can see the actual deviation from the underlying surface. Now you're done with your first reverse engineering project. If you want to take this out, you can just press export and export it as a step or IGS file format and load it in one of your CAD packages. This was the first Getting Started tutorial. We have a lot of tutorials on our tutorials page. You will refer to them on your journey with the quick surface and I'm sure you have a lot of fun and satisfaction using our software. Thank you for watching.